When you need an attorney, experience matters. Past success matters. Attention to detail matters. Prince Glover Hayes is celebrating 40 years. 40 years as a civil litigation firm. And delivers over 100 years. Over 100 years of combined experience. We have been able to obtain some of the largest jury verdicts and settlements in the state of Alabama for our clients. We will fight. We will fight. We will fight to make sure our clients get the justice they deserve. Here at Prince Glover Hayes, we counsel. We advocate. We litigate. And we are devoted to helping you. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Royer, along with Bob Prince, and welcome to People's Law School, brought to you by Prince Glover and Hayes Law Firm here in Tuscaloosa. On this program, we deal with issues that are important to you and your family. The topic for this program, Alabama Rules of the Road, things you don't know could hurt you. Here's your host, Bob Prince. Prince Glover Hayes is honored to present this series to you. So. Rules of the road, as Mike said, how can they hurt you? Well, number one, if you've ever had that trooper pull you over, it definitely can hurt you if you don't know the rules. Number two, these are the rules that lawyers go to whenever they're representing somebody that's injured or they're defending somebody that's been sued. All the rules are contained right here, Code of Alabama. This is one of the volumes that just about every lawyer has, and this particular one has rules that apply to vehicles on our roadways. So what does it not cover? Like for instance, would these rules cover bicycles? Yes, they cover cars, trucks, bicycles, motorcycles. What about if you're riding a horse? Believe it or not, they cover you if you're riding a horse or even if you are in a horse-drawn carriage. Here's the rule, you get on the highway and you're transported you are subject to all the responsibilities of every other driver. You get the benefits of every other driver too, but you have to follow the rules if you're gonna be transported. All right, I said public roads. Does that include a parking lot? No, private parking lots, if you go to the mall, that's not a, a, a road that Alabama covers by the, with these rules. So let's start off with some that you may not know that I found interesting. Like the first, you're looking at a photograph, um, a slide right now, of a roadway that's winding, narrow, and it's in the mountains. <laughs> and so, would you have to slow down if you were driving in the, on this highway? Well, the answer is of course you would slow down just as a matter of common sense. But did you know that if you cannot see 200 feet ahead, you're supposed to blow your horn? Now, I don't hear people blowing horns when I'm in the mountains, but that's the rule uh, in Alabama at least. All right, well what about this one? Can you make a, a U-turn? That's one of my favorite ones because I did not know the answer to this until I started studying these rules of the road. How many times have you wanted to turn around and you look and you don't see a no U-turn sign? Can you U-turn? Well, here's, here's why you have to go to law school to be to know these rules. It starts off and says, no, you cannot do a U-turn. And then it says, well, unless you can do it safely. <laughs> in other words, if you don't pull out in front of a car and you don't impede traffic. So you have two requirements. So no, you can't, except yes, you can. And then they say, but you can't do it on a hill. You can't do it when you're approaching a curve. But this time they say 500 feet of visibility. Now, to put that in proper context for all you football fans, that's 166 yards. So one and two thirds football fields, you can do a U-turn as long as you can see ahead that far. All right, let's go to speed limits. So here's, this is one of my favorites too. And I want you to listen to how subjective this is. In other words, People like, we like to look at that sign that says 65 miles per hour. We know what that means. But do you know what it means when the, when the Code of Alabama says we cannot drive at a greater speed 
than is reasonable and prudent under the circumstances. I mean, that's pretty subjective. They don't stop there. They go on and say, every person shall. In other words, you have to do this. Drive at a safe speed. When? When approaching an intersection? Yep. When you come to a railroad crossing? Yes. What about a curve? Yes. A hill? Yes. A narrow winding, winding road uh, where special hazards exist or if there's a lot of traffic or if the weather's bad? You know, what they're saying here is just because that sign says 65 miles per hour, if, you're in a, if it's raining, the trooper can give you a ticket if you're going 64. If, he, if in the trooper's opinion, you're going too fast for the conditions, you definitely can get a ticket. So here's the duty. If you, here's the best way to do it. Put yourself in the position of a reasonable and prudent person because that's exactly what the code says. Everybody's judged by that standard. All right, now, I want to know now if you know, I want to see how well you know the speed limits. I mean, just about everybody in here, I bet you, drives or has driven. So let me see if, how you do. You're in an urban district. Now, what that means is urban as opposed to rural. Rural, you're downtown. You're around some houses. You're around some businesses. You can't find a posted speed limit sign. What do you think it is? 25. It's 25 is a pretty good guess. It's 30. 30 miles an hour. What if you're on an unpaved road? You know, we still have those in Alabama. So if you're on an unpaved road, what do you think the, the state speed limit is there? 15. It should be 15 on some of the roads I've been on. Uh, it's 35. So they give you five more miles per hour if you're out in the rural area. A county maintained paved road, 45 miles per hour. A county paved maintained road. All right, now, what about on, you're on a road like going to Montgomery. It's not a four lane. You're taking 82, Highway 82, two lane. You can't find a posted speed limit. What do you think it is? I mean, it's not a dirt road. It's not a county road. What do you think is posted speed, what the speed limit is there? 55, exactly right. If you're on the interstate, y'all know this from going to Birmingham or heading west, it's 70 on the interstate. But it's 65 if you're on a four lane that's not interstate. Now, that's a little tricky. 65. So if you're buzzing at 70 or 75, a trooper usually won't pull you over for 75. And you hit, uh, you leave the interstate and you're on a four lane. It looks like the interstate. Well, the speed limit drops by five miles per hour. And that might be just enough to get you a ticket. All right. Well, I know you've seen some of these vehicles, trucks that carry a sign on the side that says explosives. Are we going to let those people go 70 miles per hour on interstate? Answer is no. If you're carrying explosive in a car, in a truck, on a motorcycle, or hazardous waste, 55 is your limit, not 70. Um, so we, we take all that into consideration. Now, a city, you need to know this, though, a city can change these speed limits as long as they're in the city limits, not the police jurisdictions, city limits, they can change them and lower them from state laws. Okay, <clears throat> let me. here's one I found interesting. When can a trooper give you a ticket? I mean, does he have to see you uh, speeding to give you a ticket? You know, put the radar gun on you? Well, I mean, that's one way. But what if he has got somebody pulled over and he hears something in his little radio in his ear, his mic, and it's a fellow trooper? who is, you know, up, up flying around up there. And he spotted you going 75, 80, and he tells this trooper. So the trooper that's going to pull you over, he hasn't seen you. He does not see you. They describe the car to him, your car. He jumps in his car, tracks you down. Can he give you a ticket? Well, he can, provided that person that's up in the air, whatever device they're using, that it's been tested and certified. That's where the lawyers fight the tickets. If there's any machine involved, you can bet a good defense lawyer is all over that machine. You know, who tested it? Where's the cert certificate? How qualified are you to, to read it? All those things come into play. You, you probably wouldn't do it on a regular ticket, but suppose you're at your limit of points. Now you're about to get your license suspended. Well, it might benefit you to hire a lawyer. 
Here's one that the police will really give you a ticket for. And if you, in Tuscaloosa, if you head towards Birmingham, uh, in the past anyway, in the last two years, and you get close to Mercedes, they had construction zones there where they're working on the road. If you see a sign that says caution workers, in between those signs, if there are any workers, 15 miles per hour. So don't just slow, slack up at 70. They can give you a ticket. Uh, if you, between the signs now, if they're workers, you've got to really slow down. And it's a good rule. We've had we've represented a lot of families, unfortunately, where somebody's been killed because the driver didn't slow down uh, and had a wreck or left the road. So Mike, I understand we have some questions from the audience tonight. Katie has this question from Tuscaloosa, and so many accidents <laughs> these days are so expensive, but Katie asks if two parties are involved in a collision and both agree that there are no injuries and no appreciable damage, is it okay to exchange information, then leave the scene of the crime and go your merry way? Is that okay? Um, figure of speech when you say leave the scene of the crime is really not a crime, but yes, you can do that. Uh, as long as the damage is not over like $50 or there's some amount under the statute. But, hey, look, if, if both of y'all say that my bumper's not injured, I'll fix it, I'll turn it in, you turn yours in, the law does not, it, there's no law that says you can't do that. Okay, let's go to something a little bit different. Well, you're looking at a trooper right now, and I want to tell you about this one. There is this law when I said municipalities can change the rules. Well, they can't, what they can't do, y'all know there's speed traps, it used to be. Come back from the beach, come to Tuscaloosa, you're on the interstate. Some of these little towns would pull you over. They'd stop you. Well, the, we passed a law that says if you are a policeman in a town under 19,000 people, that'd be interesting to study how many towns that is. I bet you it hits all the major speed traps. You, a trooper, or not trooper, a city policeman cannot pull you over on the state's road for speeding. It's a way to stop the speed traps. Okay, <clears throat> you're driving along the highway and you feel somebody come up on your bumper. Uh, you know, he's tailgating you. How close can he get under the law? Well, we don't necessarily say a certain number of feet. The law looks at how fast you're going. So for every 10 miles per hour you're traveling, for every 10 miles, you've got to leave 20 feet. All right? 50 miles an hour, 100 feet. If you're going to Birmingham, driving the speed limit, 70 miles per hour, 140 feet. That's, for you football fans, half a football field. That's a, that's a way to judge it. So if you're going 50, it's about 33 yards. But if you're going 70, it's almost 50 yards. I think we have another question, Mike. Bob, we do. Ryan from Tuscaloosa has this question, and I think it's a great question, too. How am I to behave if I'm pulled over by a police officer? Well, the first thing is you need to be very respectful. The second thing is do not get out of your vehicle. <laughs> Stay seated. Don't make any kind of sudden movements for your glove compartment or whatever. Wait till the officer comes. They will come slowly up to the car and they come to your driver's window and they'll say, let me see your license, and then you get them. I don't anticipate and start moving around while he's coming. He may think you're getting a weapon. So be respectful. Uh, that's always a good rule. And don't make any sudden movements. I know you've seen trucks going down the interstate. We have a lot of them now. So you see that space in there and you've got that black car. Could he fit in there? The answer is no. He couldn't, not without wrecking or, you know, really being a, a dangerous maneuver. Law, the, both those truckers are violating the law. Well, the one in the back is. The one in the back is definitely violating. They have to leave enough room for a passenger car to pass and come in between the trucks. The law says 300 feet. Now, again, that's a football field. And look at that slide right there. That's more like a first down. They are definitely violating it. Okay? Um, what are some other ones? You're driving along... You're in a uh, town, you don't know really where you are, and you come, you approach an intersection. Do you have to slow down? I mean, well, yes, you do. And here's what we say. We say, you have to slow down. Don't worry about that posted speed limit. You've been going 50 or 45. You've got to reduce to a safe speed. Has this ever happened to you? You come to an intersection, say it's a four-way stop, and this other car pulls up about the same time you do. It's a four-way stop. Who goes? Who's got the right-of-way there? 
<laughs> well, the one on the left. That was you had a 50/50 chance. The one on the one on the left has to yield to the one on the right. So that's the rule on that one. That's a good rule to remember too. Let's talk about passing. You, you, um, you know, what do you have to do if you're being passed? Now, you know, we have a lot of road rage people now. And here's what the law is. You cannot speed up. That's a specific law. If you're being passed, you have to yield to the right and don't and maintain maintain your speed. Do not speed up. I think we have another question, Mike. From Corey in Green Pond. She says a lot of states have a law of no passing on the right, in the right lane. Corey says she thinks this helps stop accidents. Do you think this will ever be a law here in Alabama? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Mike, it is a law here in Alabama. You're not supposed to pass on the right. There's one exception to that, and that is if you're on a four lane, like going to Birmingham or going uh, to Meridian, Mississippi, and you're in a four lane, you can pass on the right, but any other time it is against the law, you're supposed to pass on the left. You're out driving down the road you, and you see a bicyclist. We see a lot of those recently. And that's a good thing here on campus. It saves parking, it saves gasoline and smog. Well, what do we have to do uh, when you meet one? Are the rules the same? Well, it depends. If that, in this instance that you're looking at right here, that bicyclist, is in the bicycle, there's no lane for him. He's in the car lane. If he was in a bicycle lane like we have here at the university, then you have to leave him three feet. You can't get within three feet of that bicycle, even if you're you know, on a two lane road, if he's in the bike lane. All right, well, what if there's no bike lane? If the posted speed limit is under 45, and it, and it is here on campus, everywhere around in the city, if you're in a municipality, it's gonna be, as we talked about earlier, you're gonna be 30, 35, some of the smaller towns, 25. Well, if you're in a low miles per hour area and the cyclist, like here, is not in a bike lane, then you have to, he has to, he's got a duty. He's gotta get over as far as he can within two feet of that shoulder. And then, if he does, then you, can, you can't get closer than three feet. So, it rules for everybody. He also can't ride two abreast unless he's in a bike lane off the road. So, if you see two bicycle riders side by side, which I do a lot here in Tuscaloosa, uh, that, that's, they're breaking the law. Okay, here's a topic that I, I really wanted to cover. I think it's very important for a lot of reasons. Number one, the topic is emergency vehicles. And, and here's why I wanna cover it. First of all, you can get a ticket. Easy, you can get a ticket. That's number one, number, if you don't follow the rule. Number two, there are a lot of accidents. So I, you know, this is an area where I would gladly not represent somebody that's been injured. If we could prevent police officers, first responders, paramedics, firemen, record drivers, all these have laws protecting them. So if you're driving down the road and you see a policeman with his lights on, that's, that's the key. You gotta have that light on. You see the lights on right there. In Alabama, it can be red, it can be blue on the police officer. On a fire truck, ambulance, and all that, red. If you see that light either flashing or, or solid, your duty is to get in the other lane if it's clear. In other words, you gotta get away from them as far as you can. If you can't do that, if there's traffic coming, you're on a two lane, then you are too slow, and I mean really slow. You, you've gotta get down to like 15 miles per hour under the limit, and if as that limit drops, if you're in a 55, you gotta, you're all of a sudden, you're doing 40. You So 45, you're doing 30. So you gotta drop on down. Uh, and it, as I said, there are just way too many instances where somebody will hit that trooper's door, hit his car, pin him against the, um, the car in front of him. That's just something we, that's easy to avoid. We can stop that. This is everybody either, you know, get over or slow way down. All right, there are some, uh, let me ask you this one. Uh, there's some special rules that apply to an ambulance or a police officer. Police officers chasing somebody here in city limits. An ambulance is rushing to a wreck scene and you're coming through the intersection and you don't see them, you don't hear them and they hit you and hurt you, you know, injure you. So can you sue 
the city of Tuscaloosa? Can you sue the ambulance driver and his company for the injuries? Uh, it depends. I mean, it's kind of a tough question until you, the lawyer points it out to you in the rules. First of all, he's got to have those lights going. If he's got the lights going, he's starting to get in pretty good shape. If he's got his siren going along with his lights, he's exempt from the laws. Now, not totally. He can go through intersections. He can go through stop signs. He can not uh, honor the speed limit. He doesn't have to honor or she doesn't have to honor the direction of traffic. You know, like you'll see a, a, one, a sign that says everybody has to turn right here. Well, he doesn't have to do that, provided that he keeps in mind, or she does, the driver has to keep the safety of other motorists in mind. Here's exactly what it says. It says the foregoing, in other words, the right to do all those things that I said, uh, does not relieve the driver of his duty to drive with due regard to the safety of all persons. So that's kind of subjective. But just suffice it to say, if you hear the siren and you see the flashing lights, you need to pull over and stop. Get out of the way. Um, and it's only, you know, it makes sense. If you don't hear those things and you go on through the intersection like you think you've got the right of way and he hits you, well, he, he can't do that. All right, so to qualify then as an emergency vehicle, they have to have those two, uh, two things going. Okay, here's another one. A record driver, that didn't used to be the law. It used to just be ambulance, first responders, and policemen. Now it's records. Actually, the name of that law is Move Over Act. That's the name of it. Alabama's Move Over Act. In other words, you've got to absolutely get uh, over. And, and uh, as soon as it's safe, that's how they word it. And they say vacate the right-hand side. Okay, how about this one? Now, this is a brand new one, too. You see a garbage truck. He's in your neighborhood. Now, you don't see any workers. You see the garbage truck on the side. And so you doing your 20 miles per hour in your neighborhood or whatever the speed limit is there. And, and he steps around the truck to, you know, put trash in there, put the bin in there. You hit him. Are you liable? He stepped in front of you. Well, here's what the law says. They added, they added these garbage truck workers and garbage truck drivers to have the same status as a policeman and an ambulance driver, you've got to yield to the worker, you've got to yield to the truck, provided you have reasonable notice. And that's why I started this off by saying you saw the truck. Now, if I turn around, if I turn the curve in my neighborhood, I don't see a truck. And he's, you know, in a side place, and the worker's out here doing the bins and everything, and I've got, you know, I'm looking at something else and he steps out in front of me, he is not protected because I don't know he's there. I've had no notice of that. And in that instance, he should not be able to, um, to get me, you know, to, uh, he shouldn't be able to defend, in other words. It also applies to recycling trucks, not just trash trucks. I think there's another question. Bob, in Europe, a lot of people uh, have cameras mounted on their dash while they drive and they record accidents and other things that happen. David from here in Tuscaloosa asked if that's a good idea and if that would uh, be usable in a court case if it came up, your own video that you had. Do you think it's a good idea to have a camera on there all the time? I think it's a great idea. You know, police now have these body cams and we, didn't, we no longer have to speculate. It's no longer he said and the other one says something different. Video tells the tale. So, yeah, I think you need to have one on there. I'm not sure that it, uh, you have to, you know, figure out about the, the wide angle. Peripherally, if somebody hits you, it may not cover it, but it's certainly going to cover anything happening to the front of you. So I do think it's a good idea. Okay, here's one. I got, I got a couple of letters, phone calls on. One day I was doing a presentation on TV, and I came to the school bus law. And I got some irate calls because I didn't make it clear. So I'm going to try to clear it up for you tonight. Here are the rules. School buses and church buses get special treatment, and they should, provided they have, first of all, at least eight-inch letters. See the school bus sign on the back of it? They got to have that in front and the back. Have to have 
lights that are at least eight uh, inches tall, visible. You know, in other words, you can see those things uh, for, I think, I forgot how far it is, but it's, it's a good, you know, you've got to be able to see uh, the lights on the thing. They got that little sign, that's, and you see that stop sign that pops out there? Okay, if you're on a two-lane road, and you, that, say that school bus meets those requirements, you have to stop. You don't have any choice in the matter. You've got to stop. Suppose that it's a four-lane. Now, here's where it gets tricky, and here's where they said, I did not explain this well enough. If you're on a four-lane, and it's a divided four-lane, in other words, it has a median down the center, Y'all y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not the four lanes. It's two lanes, a grassy area, two more lanes. Now you're coming this way, the bus going that way. He stops, all the traffic stops. Do you have to stop? No. If, if it's a divided highway with a median, you don't. If it's a four lane, you do. If you're coming this way, he's going that way, you have to stop. It's pretty logical if you think about it. Children are getting off. They're probably not going to walk down in a ditch median to get to their house. But a four lane, they might have to, you know, they might have to go across that one. So, Mike, I think we have another question. Bob, we do. And this is one that I've heard you talk about several times and a good question, too. This is from Bob here in Tuscaloosa. If stopped for a DUI, should you submit to a breathalyzer test? Uh, well, you know, the, a famous criminal defense lawyer, when he was stopped after he had been drinking at a cocktail party, he refused the test. Now, that kind of told me that's a good, good thing to do, but it's an automatic license suspension, so I'm not so sure uh, that you benefit by saying you're not going to. Uh, you know, they field test you there at the scene, and then they take you in to the, to the station, and then they give you a breathalyzer test. You know, I think, I don't know if I would get that automatic suspension. I think I'd just go ahead and cooperate. Text messaging. Can you text when you drive? Here's a better here's a better question for you. I'm I'm going off to a uh, Hoover and I want to put in my GPS. It's on my phone, and I'm you know I want to plug it in there and and see if I can go. Uh, now I'm down. I've done that. I'm going down the road. I'm about to turn. I reach over and get my phone for that GPS and have a wreck. Can they get me for using a wireless telephone in my car? Is that the same as texting? I think it should be, <laughs> but it is not. It is not. In other words, your phone, you can't text on it. You can't manually use it uh, to call. You can voice call all you want to. You can't manually do it. Program your GPS before you go. You can't do it when you're moving. Uh, it's, a, it's a violation, you can get a ticket but you can read it, the GPS. Like I said, I think they need to change that law. But, well, thank y'all very much for allowing me to be here tonight. A good program, lots of good information. That's gonna do it for People's Law School for tonight. We hope you'll join us again next time. And thanks very much for watching. When you need an attorney, experience matters. Past success matters. Attention to detail matters. Prince Glover Hayes is celebrating 40 years. 40 years as a civil litigation firm. And delivers over 100 years. Over 100 years of combined experience. We've been able to obtain some of the largest jury verdicts and settlements in the state of Alabama for our clients. We will fight. We will fight. We will fight to make sure our clients get the justice they deserve. Here at Prince Glover Hayes, we counsel. We advocate. We litigate. And we are devoted to helping you. People's Law School is brought to you by Prince Glover Hayes as a community outreach class offered by the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute.